defenses. From Bloom Law website, what does NCR mean? NCR stands for not criminally responsible. An NCR is a rarely used defense, one that is difficult to prove in court, and is unlikely to result in an accused walking away scot-free. An NCR defense is what is known in lay language as an insanity defense. In order for an NCR defense to be successful, one of two things must be proven. One either the accused did know what he or she was doing when the offense was committed. Two or the accused knew what he or she was doing but did not understand that is was wrong. The purpose of the NCR defense, and why it exists in law, is to protect individuals suffering from mental illness who are so sick that they really do not know the difference between right and wrong. What makes this defense so hard to prove is that the defense applies to what was happening during the commission of a crime, which may be a long time before the trial takes place. If an NCR defense is proven, does the accused walk away free? If an NCR defense is successful, the court deems that an offense was committed but the individual who committed the offense was not criminally responsible while that offense was committed. This does not mean that the offender walks away free. There are three options available to the court or review board following a successful NCR defense, the offender may have an unconditional release, a conditional release, or may be detained indefinitely. While the public may have the perception that an NCR defense is a way to get away with a serious crime, and it is possible under the law for an offender to be released, what is most likely to happen is the offender will be remanded to a psychiatric facility for some unknown length of time. Automatism from Canadian Encyclopedia of Law The term automatism describes unconscious, involuntary behavior. Automatism is a defense to criminal charges in the following sense, to convict an accused the prosecution must prove beyond a reasonable doubt both a prohibited act and fault. The accused act must have been voluntary, the product of choice or will. The fault requirement for many criminal offenses is a subjective mental state, a guilty mind, or mens re, involving an intention to perform the act and knowledge of the circumstances. Both voluntariness and mens re may ordinarily be inferred from the facts of an alleged offense. In certain cases, evidence of automatism may, however, be admitted to rebut the inference of voluntariness or the capacity for mens re, and so to show that the accused was not criminally responsible. The legal rules governing the use of automatism evidence vary with the cause of the automatism, which may be disease of the mind, intoxication, or some other circumstances. By raising evidence of automatism, an accused puts his or her sanity in issue. Pursuant to the mental disorder rules, the automatism may be proved to have been caused by mental disorder, and the accused would be found not criminally responsible on account of mental disorder. CCRIMINAL Capacity The use of evidence of automatism caused by intoxication is limited by the Common Law Intoxication Rules and S33.1 of the Criminal Code. In particular, under S33.1, self-induced intoxication automatism is no defense to offenses of violence, C-I-N-T-O-X-I-C-A-T-I-O-N, defense of. For a defense to result in acquittal, accused either has to raise a reasonable doubt as to their guilt or satisfy a, reverse onus, balance of probabilities standard that the defense was operating at the time of the alleged act slash omission. To raise any defense, the accused must satisfy the air of reality test to try to raise a reasonable doubt. Per R. V. Sinus, the air of reality test asks. O. Oh, could a properly instructed jury, acting reasonably, acquit the accused even if they accepted all of the evidence favorable to the defense as true? The judge would determine if there is an air of reality after weighing all of the evidence and considering whether a reasonable and properly instructed jury would acquittal on the basis of the proposed defense assuming that all of the evidence favorable to the accused is true. O air of reality test for mistaken belief in communicated consent. R. V. Barton, an accused who wishes to rely on the defense of honest but mistaken belief in communicated consent must first demonstrate an air of reality. So, the trial judge must consider whether there is any evidence upon which a reasonable trier of fact acting could find. 1. 
that the accused took reasonable steps to ascertain consent and 2. that the accused honestly believed the complainant communicated consent. Defenses where the Crown has not made out all of the elements to the standard of a reasonable doubt. Oh, because of an evidentiary problem, i.e. inadmissibility because of charter breach. Oh, because one or more elements are missing, a lack of voluntariness, actus reus, contemporaneity, or mens re. Oh, mistake of fact equal a defense that there was inadequate mens re to make out the offense. Oh, this is not the same as a mistake of law equal no defense. R. V. Papa John. Mistake of fact is more accurately seen as a negation of guilty intention than as the affirmation of a positive defense. The accused is able to claim that he slash she did not have the requisite mens re for the crown to make out the elements of the offense, because he slash she was operating under a flawed perception of the facts. In Papa John mere honesty about the mistaken belief in consent, even where it was unreasonable, would have satisfied the requirements of this defense. Mistaken belief in communicated consent equal accused believed honestly but mistakenly that the complainant consented. Oh to raise this defense, the following conditions must be met. The mistaken belief must be honest. The mistake must be that the complainant communicated consent. The mistake cannot arise out of recklessness, willful blindness, self-induced intoxication, or circumstances vitiating consent. The mistaken belief will only be a defense if the accused took reasonable steps in the circumstances to ascertain communicated consent, objective measure. R. V. U. N. Chuk, remember that there can be nonverbal consent but it must be active, communicated, demonstrative consent. Consent cannot be implied. Section 273.2, Mistaken belief in communicated consent is not a defense where O, A, the accused belief arose from I, the accused self-induced intoxication 2, the accused recklessness or willful blindness, or 3, any circumstance referred to in subsection 265, 3, or 273 1, 2, or, 3, in which no consent is obtained, consent was vitiated. O, B, the accused did not take reasonable steps, in the circumstances known to the accused at the time, to ascertain that the complainant was consenting, or O, C, there is no evidence of expressed consent by words or conduct that the complainant's voluntary agreement to the activity was affirmatively expressed by words or actively expressed by conduct. Section 276, 1, in proceedings in respect of sexual assault, etc., evidence that the complainant has engaged in sexual activity, whether with the accused or with any other person, is not admissible to support an inference that, by reason of the sexual nature of that activity, the complainant a, is more likely to have consented to the sexual activity that forms the subject matter of the charge, or b, is less worthy of belief. O goal of section 276 is to prevent complainant's sexual history from being considered on the record as evidence on the complainant's credibility or likelihood that he slash she consented, weighing prejudicial versus probative value. R. V. Sense regret, recklessness slash willful blindness slash knowledge of a lack of consent are interchangeable. These mental states will satisfy the mens re even where the accused claims mistaken belief in communicated consent. Barton affirmed, 2019 SCC, these limitations on the mistaken belief in communicated consent defense and interpreted S273.2 and S276 as follows. O. The accused must have a belief that the complainant communicated consent, not just that the complainant subjectively consented. O. SCC pointed out the following mistakes of law inherent in Barton's defense. The absence of the any objection by the complainant is not consent. Advance consent is not consent. The fact that the complainant is a sex worker does not demonstrate that there was consent, because past sexual history cannot be used to read in consent. Oh the jury in Barton, ought to have received instructions about the racism as well as the twin myth problems inherent in the accused defense. Barton also went on to explain what reasonable steps in section 273 2, b, means. 
Oh what constitutes reasonable steps is context dependent and it is impossible to write a complete list of what reasonable steps would be. But it is never reasonable to claim that reasonable steps were taken by the accused on the basis of an assumption that is supported by the misogynist thinking in the twin myths. Where there is an ongoing relationship, for example, there may be more room for consent that is communicated through behavior or conduct whereas when people have been drinking there may be a greater need for express communicated verbal consent. Justice Moldover in Barton, our criminal justice system and all participants within it should take reasonable steps to address systemic biases, prejudices, and stereotypes against indigenous persons, and in particular indigenous women, and sex workers head-on. Turning a blind eye to these biases, prejudices, and stereotypes is not an answer. Accordingly, as an additional safeguard going forward, in sexual assault cases where the complainant is an indigenous woman or girl, trial judges would be well advised to provide an express instruction aimed at countering prejudice against indigenous women and girls. OMMIGW report, call on media and social influencers to take proactive steps to break down stereotypes that hypersexualize and demean indigenous women, girls, and 2S plus people call to end practices that perpetuate myths that indigenous women are more sexually available and less worthy than non-indigenous women. CJS has an important role but not an exhaustive one. This is a social justice problem as much as a criminal justice one. Capacity defenses accused lacked the capacity to have the necessary voluntariness or mens re. Air of reality test, sinus, plus proof defense on a balance of probabilities, NCR, automatism, extreme intoxication. A reverse onus situation, normally crowns evidence slash case would need to overcome the defense at this point or else the defense would automatically be made out. Age, children not criminally responsible until age 12. OYCJA, age 12 to 18 same offenses, different procedures and sentencing. O Criminal Code S13, no criminal liability under 12 years of age. Not criminally responsible, NCR. O this is not the same as the accused inability to stand trial, that is a different problem. NCR equals suffering from a mental disorder and unable to appreciate the nature slash quality of a proscribed act slash omission or unable to appreciate that it is wrong, S16, 1. O in 1843, the MNAT test was developed by the House of Lords at Queen Victoria's insistence. The jurors ought to be told in all cases that every man is to be presumed to be sane and to possess a sufficient degree of reason to be responsible for his crimes until the contrary be proved to their satisfaction, and that to establish a defense on the ground of insanity, it must be clearly proved that, at the time of the committing of the act, the party accused was laboring under such a defect of reason, from disease of the mind, as not to know the nature and quality of the act he was doing, or, if he did know it, that he did not know he was doing what was wrong. Oh today, Canadian law has replaced the MNAT test with section 16 of the code. 1. No person is criminally responsible for an act committed or an omission made while suffering from a mental disorder that rendered the person incapable of appreciating the nature and quality of the act or omission or of knowing that it was wrong. 2. Every person is presumed not to suffer from a mental disorder so as to be exempt from criminal responsibility by virtue of subsection 1 until the contrary is proved on the balance of probabilities. 3. The burden of proof that an accused was suffering from a mental disorder so as to be exempt from criminal responsibility is on the party that raises the issue. O Crown or defense can raise the NCR issue. Test for whether NCR defense is available. One accused was suffering from a mental disorder at the time of the act slash omission, N. 2. The mental disorder either. A rendered the accused incapable of appreciating the nature and quality of the act slash omission or B rendered the accused incapable of knowing that the act slash omission was wrong according to ordinary morals of their society chalk. R. V. Cooper, Definition of Disease of the Mind, 2A Any illness, disorder, or abnormal condition which impairs the human mind and its functioning except for mental states that are transitory or self-induced. 
Ho points out the unique Canadian law requirement of perception, to a or b. An accused person must be able to perceive the consequences, impact and results of a physical act for there to be criminal liability, Cooper. R. V. Abbey, 2A, a delusion which renders an accused incapable of appreciating that the penal sanctions attaching to the commission of the crime are applicable to him does not render the accused incapable of appreciating the nature and quality of the act, and does not bring into operation the first arm of the defense. No NCR because he was able to appreciate that the conduct was wrong. R. V. Kajeldson, 2A, the NCR defense does not extend to one who merely lacks appropriate feelings for the victim or lacks feelings of remorse or guilt for what he has done, even though such lack of feeling stems from the disease of the mind. Appreciation of the nature and quality of the act does not import a requirement that the act be accompanied by appropriate feelings about the effect of the act on other people. No NCR where there is a lack of empathy for the victim because of psychopathy, pedophilia, or sociopathy for example. R.V. Chalk, 2b, alternative moral structures cannot be used to justify behavior, but a person who believes they are acting in accordance with the ordinary morals of their society but because of a mental disorder is committing an offense would still be able to claim NCR. Oh, if accused can appreciate that their actions would be wrong according to ordinary social values, then no NCR defense is available. RV Women, 2B, killing someone because of a paranoid delusion where an accused person truly believed they were acting in self-defense means that they cannot appreciate that the consequences of their actions would be wrong according to the morals of society. Society allows self-defense where there is an honest belief that you are in danger. Oh, the crux of the inquiry is whether the accused lacks the capacity to rationally decide whether the act is right or wrong and hence to make a rational choice about whether to do it or not. The inability to make a rational choice may result from a variety of mental dysfunctions including delusions which make the accused perceive an act which is wrong as right or justifiable. R. V. Campioni, 2b. The accused person's mental disorder must also render him or her incapable of knowing that the acts in question are morally wrong as measured against societal standards, and therefore incapable of making the choice necessary to act in accordance with those standards. O oh, mother killed her kids to protect them from being reunited with their estranged father. She was not successful in raising an NCR claim at trial. Oh if she had been successful in showing that she was acting out of a genuine belief in child protection, equal moral value recognized by society, then she would have been able to demonstrate an inability to understand her actions as wrong. Automatism equal NCR automatism slash non-NCR automatism. Oh to successfully use this defense, the accused must. First accused must meet the evidentiary burden. Our test must be satisfied to raise the defense. Next accused must satisfy legal burden of proving defense the standard of BOP, i.e. more likely than not, in order to be either designated NCR or acquitted for non-NCR automatism, reverse onus. Oh the absence of volition is always a defense to a criminal offense, R. V. Rabbi. Oh automatism is a legal term used to describe one specific kind of involuntary action, automatism refers to involuntary conduct that is the product of a mental state in which the conscious mind is disassociated from the part of the mind that controls actions, R. V. Luidek. Automatism equal a state of impaired consciousness where there is no voluntariness on the part of an accused person not unconsciousness, Stone. R. V. Stone, per Justice Bastarach. I therefore prefer to define automatism as a state of impaired consciousness, rather than unconsciousness, in which an individual, though capable of action, has no voluntary control over that action. Automatism equal no voluntariness equal no actus reus. O two-part determination for the defense of automatism. 1. Our test for automatism, Stone, Sinus, Lafontaine. Trier of Law asks if there is a proper foundation for the defense of automatism? Stone. Oh this is a legal determination on the same scale as any other hour, Sinus, look to the following non-exhaustive slash determinative list of factors, Stone, Lafontaine. Psychiatric slash psychological evidence. Foundation and nature of expert opinion. 
Severity of triggering stimulus. Corroborating evidence of bystanders. Corroborating medical history of automatistic like dissociative states. Whether the alleged trigger of the automatism was also the victim of the automatistic violence. 2. Is the alleged condition, a, mental disorder automatism or, b, non-mental disorder automatism? Stone. Trier of law considers whether there is one type of automatism operating or the other, but ultimately the trier of fact makes this determination, La Fontaine. Oh this determination should be put to the trier of fact not predetermined by the judge alone in jury trials, La Fontaine, reflecting on some slight ambiguity in stone. This determination is a legal determination, not a medical-slash-psychiatric one in which mental disorder equal disease of the mind, stone, rabbi. Once the air of reality test has been satisfied, the trier of fact will consider all of the evidence and decide whether there is automatism and which type of automatism it is. Oh the trier of fact looks to two theories from Stone to decide which type of automatism it is, not mutually exclusive, but overlapping. 1. Internal cause theory. Is the automatistic reaction what we would expect from a normal person? Considering the nature of the triggering event, would a normal person have entered into an automatistic state? Most useful for comparing mental disorder to psychological blow. Oh an extremely shocking event would reasonably be expected to turn someone into an automaton, extremely limited because of policy considerations. Oh, someone with a mental disorder might respond differently than a normal person would or they might respond the same way. The question here is whether the automatism results from an internal cause, disease of the mind, or an external trigger such as extremely shocking event. 2. Continuing danger theory. A condition that is likely to be a continuing danger to the public would be more likely to be a mental disorder slash disease of the mind. Oh where there is a mental disorder automatism on BOP NCR designation, Stone, Review Board for Appropriate Treatment. In the past, people would be indefinitely imprisoned until they received an official pardon. Oh where is non-mental disorder automatism on BOP acquittal, Stone. Psychological blow type automatism. The ordinary stresses and disappointments of life which are the common lot of mankind do not constitute an external cause constituting an explanation for a malfunctioning of the mind which takes it out of the category of a disease of the mind, rabbi. Psychological blow automatism might be normal for the average person who saw a loved one murdered or seriously assaulted. Extraordinary external events can precipitate automatism that the law can justifiably excuse with an acquittal, rabbi. R.V. Stone unsuccessfully tried to claim both slash either type of conviction, but the court upheld the manslaughter conviction, provocation defense used in the alternate to reduce murder to manslaughter. Sleepwalking automatism. R.V. Parks, the question at the time that this was decided was whether the accused should face an NCR designation, that would have meant indefinite detention, or straight acquittal. Oh the determination of whether this type of automatism will be mental disorder automatism or non-NCR automatism rests on whether there is an ongoing danger to the public. If there is a danger then there will be NCR if there is no danger there will be an acquittal, as there was for Parks. Intoxication, equal a denial of the mens re element of criminal liability. Oh involuntary intoxication, daily, Davy Alt. This would necessarily remove the mens re requirement if the intoxication was such that the accused did not have the requisite mental state to be criminally liable. There was no mens re for the intoxication, never mind the subsequent offense, R. V. Rabbi. O. Self-induced intoxication Mild intoxication, advanced intoxication, extreme intoxication. The criminal code does not define intoxication. The following three types of intoxication are identified in R.V. Daily, SCC 2007. Mild intoxication may result in lowered inhibitions or poor judgment and is not relevant to criminal guilt. Advanced intoxication may negative specific intent, resulting in an acquittal on specific intent offenses, 
but there will still likely be a conviction on lesser included general intent offenses i.e. murder, manslaughter or assault, causing bodily harm assault simpliciter. Oh this is not technically a defense, rather, evidence of advanced intoxication makes it harder for Crown to prove subjective mens re beyond a reasonable doubt for specific intent, i.e. where a subjective mens re accompanies a specific actus reus component. Extreme Intoxication, established in Davialt, SCC 1994. O negatives general intent and slash or voluntariness, resulting in full acquittal. But this defense is not available for crimes of violence, per S33.1 any crime that interferes with a victim's bodily integrity. Reaction to Davialt, where the SCC said that extreme intoxication should be a defense. Subsequent public outcry was followed by parliamentary response of Section 33.1. There are constitutional issues with this section of the Code and its constitutionality has been challenged. If this limitation on the defense of extreme intoxication is struck down as unconstitutional then an accused claiming this defense would need to raise an air of reality plus establish on a bop that the defense was operating at the time of the criminal transaction. If the provision is upheld, the defense will remain unavailable to those persons accused of crimes that interfere with a victim's bodily integrity. When the defense not available. O Section 33.1, 1, it is not a defense to an offense referred to in subsection, 3, that the accused, by reason of self-induced intoxication, lacked the general intent or the voluntariness required to commit the offense, where the accused departed markedly from the standard of care as described in subsection, 2. O, 2, for the purposes of this section, a person departs markedly from the standard of reasonable care generally recognized in Canadian society and is thereby criminally at fault where the person, while in a state of self-induced intoxication that renders the person unaware of, or incapable of consciously controlling, their behavior, voluntarily or involuntarily interferes or threatens to interfere with the bodily integrity of another person. O. 3. This section applies in respect of an offense under this Act or any other Act of Parliament that includes as an element an assault or any other interference or threat of interference by a person with the bodily integrity of another person. Examples of specific intent offenses. Murder. Theft. Assaulting a peace officer. Attempted murder. Being unlawfully in a dwelling house. Breaking and entering with intent to commit an indictable offense. Breaking and entering and committing an indictable offense, of specific intent. Causing bodily harm with intent. Offering a bribe. Possession of stolen property. Public mischief. Robbery. Touching for a sexual purpose. Examples of general intent offenses. Manslaughter. Aggravated assault. Assault and sexual assault. Assault causing bodily harm. Breaking and entering and committing an indictable offense, of general intent. Careless handling of a firearm. Dangerous driving. Mischief. Pointing a firearm. Possession of a weapon. Sexual assault causing bodily harm. Justifications and excuses accused is claiming that even though the Crown can prove all of the elements there is reasonable doubt about criminal guilt. Defense of person. O Section 34, 1, a person is not guilty of an offense if a. They believe on reasonable grounds that force is being used against them or another person or that a threat of force is being made against them or another person b. The act that constitutes the offense is committed for the purpose of defending or protecting themselves or the other person from that use or threat of force, and c. The act committed is reasonable in the circumstances. 2. In determining whether the act committed is reasonable in the circumstances, the court shall consider the relevant circumstances of the person, the other parties, and the act, including, but not limited to, the following factors a. The nature of the force or threat. b. The extent to which the use of force was imminent and whether there were other means available to respond to the potential use of force. c. The person's role in the incident. d. 
whether any party to the incident used or threatened to use a weapon. e. The size, age, gender, and physical capabilities of the parties to the incident. f. The nature, duration, and history of any relationship between the parties to the incident, including any prior use or threat of force and the nature of that force or threat. f1. Any history of interaction or communication between the parties to the incident. g. The nature and proportionality of the person's response to the use or threat of force, and h. Whether the act committed was in response to a use or threat of force that the person knew was lawful. 3. Subsection 1. Does not apply if the force is used or threatened by another person for the purpose of doing something that they are required or authorized by law to do in the administration or enforcement of the law unless the person who commits the act that constitutes the offense believes on reasonable grounds that the other person is acting unlawfully. O. David Pasiaco, the new defense against force test is as follows. For section 34, 1, apply condition 1. A. Force was being used slash threatened against the accused slash another person, or B. I. The accused subjectively believed force was being used slash threatened against them slash another person, and BII, the accused subjective belief that force was being used slash threatened against them slash another person was reasonable only innocent beliefs of this kind would operate. C. Apply modified objective analysis. A modified objective test. The modified objective analysis takes into account any personal characteristics or experiences of the accused that could reasonably have affected their perception of harm, and any externally caused transient conditions that could affect their perception, excluding self-induced intoxication. Was the accused belief that there was a threat of force a reasonable belief considering their particular circumstances? For Section 34, 3, apply Condition 2. A force slash threat of force defended against was not for the purpose of doing something that the victim was required or authorized by law to do in the administration or enforcement of the law, or oh was it a cop? Was the cop acting within their authority? b. Accused reasonably but mistakenly believed in a state of facts that, if true, would have made the force slash threat of force that the accused defended against unlawful. O was the cop acting in a way that the accused would reasonably believe to be lawful? O if it was unlawful in the reasonable eyes of the accused, then that is the same as if the cop was not acting within their legally prescribed authority. For section 34, 2, do reasonableness analysis. Throughout the act sought to be defended, the accused was acting for the purpose of defending against the force slash threat of force that was occurring or that the accused reasonably believed to be occurring. O was accused continuously acting in a way that is reasonable considering the force threatened slash what the accused believed. Look to factors in statute. ORV short in prison, self-defense looks different from prototypical bar fight scenario we usually think about, judge follows S34 analysis and concludes that Mr. Short had no avenue of escape because he was attacked in prison. Therefore, violence with a weapon that might have been totally unreasonable outside of prison was reasonable in the circumstances. The reality of prison violence and Mr. Short being trapped in the situation was such that it could not be anything but self-defense for him to use his shiv to defend himself against his attackers. It was self-defense. O.R.V. Lavelli, Battered Woman Syndrome, Justice Wilson, critical of patriarchal logic inherent in the self-defense ideal, of, immediate danger, imminent danger can look different in a domestic situation where there is a history of spousal abuse, planned, and deliberate murder can still be self-defense where Battered Woman Syndrome diagnosis exists today, immediacy, no longer required by code, instead imminence has come to embrace somewhat less restrictive temporal boundaries. The battered woman syndrome also didn't account for all kinds of non-normative situations of intimate partner violence. Iconography of the battered woman is problematic coming out of this. Later, Justice McLaughlin and LHD revised this and approached this problem differently, R.V. Malott. Intersection of case law in this area and prosecutorial discretion. 
not uncommon for crowns to offer manslaughter to victims of domestic violence who are charged with murder this is a crown discretion problem. Defense of Property R. V. Cormier, Section 35 of the Criminal Code O. Cormier, the defense is triggered upon a reasonably based belief of peaceable possession of property and of another person's specific action regarding that property. Section 35 of the Criminal Code applies to a wide range of offenses and to any type of property. The provision establishes the types of interference with peaceable possession of property that can trigger a defensive response. Therefore, the test for defense of property is as follows. 1. Accused had a reasonable belief in peaceable possession or that they were acting under the authority of the property owner who was in peaceable possession. 2. The accused believes on reasonable grounds that the other person, victim, is o, I, about to enter, entering, or having entered to the property without lawful entitlement. O, 2, about to take, taking, or having just taken the property, or O, 3, about to damage or destroy or in the process of damaging or destroying the property or making it inoperative. 3. An act committed in order to prevent triggering event is justified provided it is reasonable in the circumstances. Oh, the defensive purpose requirement is to be assessed subjectively. On the other hand, the reasonableness of the response is objectively assessed. Statute provides little guidance on what a reasonable response would be. But Cormier, difficult to conceive of it being reasonable to kill someone in defense of property. Provocation O a partial defense which reduces murder to manslaughter, section 232. O test for provocation defense, section 232 as interpreted by R. V. Tran. Objective test, would the alleged provocation a. constitute an indictable offense punishable by up to five years or more, and b. objectively, this type of trigger would deprive the ordinary person of self-control? Subjective test, did the accused actually a. act upon the sudden provocation b. before his slash her passions had time to cool o. there is a line being drawn here between homicidal rage that we want to condemn as a society and that kind of rage which we find to be reasonable. Necessity, Paitka, Latimer the defense of necessity available where circumstantial forces necessitate that an accused person make a particular choice that would otherwise invite criminal liability. Element of moral involuntariness, Paitka, accused had no meaningful choice wrong to punish people who do not exercise agency in criminal acts slash omissions. Latimer equals sad, dad kills 12-year-old daughter fails on every level of the test. O test for the availability of the necessity defense. 1. There must be imminent peril or danger. Modified objective test, posit a reasonable person in the circumstances of the accused with the same capacity as the accused. 2. The accused must have no reasonable legal alternative to the course of action she slash he undertook, and modified objective test. 3 there must be proportionality between the harm inflicted and the harm avoided. Objective test, purely what would be reasonable regardless of individual circumstance. Doris, Criminal Code Section 17 plus Ruzik, look at page 111 of Long Summary. O is the offense covered by the statutory defense. Section 17 of the Criminal Code. A person who commits an offense under compulsion by threats of immediate death or bodily harm from a person who is present when the offense is committed is excused for committing the offense if the person believes that the threats will be carried out and if the person is not a party to a conspiracy or association whereby the person is subject to compulsion. 1. Is the accused the principal or an aider slash abitur? O section 17 applies to the principal accused of committing an offense. O if aider slash abitur, use common law defense. 2. Is there immediate threat of death or bodily harm to accused? O if yes, statutory defense available. O if no, Charter Challenge S7 Ruzik criteria because as argued it violates S7 of Charter to have a requirement of immediate danger where there is still no moral voluntariness with imminent danger. If yes, use common law defense. 
3. Is the defense precluded by statute, section 17? Oh, this section does not apply where the offense that is committed is high treason or treason, murder, piracy, attempted murder, sexual assault, sexual assault with a weapon, threats to a third party or causing bodily harm, aggravated sexual assault, forcible abduction, hostage taking, robbery, assault with a weapon or causing bodily harm, aggravated assault, unlawfully causing bodily harm, arson, an offense under SS 280-283, abduction slash detention of young persons. Oh if precluded, Charter Challenge Section 7 Ruzik criteria would apply maybe. RV Ruzik as basis for Charter Challenge on S7 and POFJ. It is a principle of fundamental justice that only voluntary conduct and behavior that is the product of a free will and a controlled body, unhindered by external constraints, should attract the penalty and stigma of criminal liability. Depriving a person of liberty and branding him slash her with the stigma of criminal liability would infringe the principles of fundamental justice if the person did not have any realistic choice. O is the offense covered by the common law defense. Is the accused slash the alleged offense precluded from using the statutory defense? If yes, use Ruzik criteria. O aiders slash abiters. O S 17 exclusions. O situations where there is no immediacy. Once we know whether it is the common law or statutory defense, use the following elements as appropriate. The test requires all elements. 1. Explicit slash implicit threat of present or future death or bodily harm, directed at either accused or a third party. 2. Accused reasonably believes the threat will be carried out. 3. No safe avenue of escape, modified objective standard. 4. Close temporal connection between the threat and the harm threatened. O. Statute equal immediate threat. O. Common law equal imminent threat. 5 proportionality between the harm threatened and the harm inflicted by the accused, modified objective standard. 6. Accused must not be party to a conspiracy or association whereby accused is subject to compulsion and actually new threats slash coercion to commit offenses were a possible result of that criminal activity slash conspiracy slash association, i.e. a gang slash organized crime. Defense of Abandonment, Gautier. 1. There was an intention to abandon or withdraw from the unlawful purpose. 2. There was timely communication of this abandonment slash withdrawal to those who wished to continue. 3. The communication served unequivocal notice upon those who wished to continue, and 4. The accused took, in a manner proportionate to her slash his participation in the commission of the planned offense, reasonable steps in the circumstances to neutralize slash cancel out the effects of her slash his participation or to prevent the commission of the offense. Procedural defenses. Accused has tactical burden, but is responding to the crown. One crown has not made out all of the elements under its legal burden, including non-NCR slash automatistic involuntariness. Two Crown has breached charter rights in ways that cannot be justified under S1 lack of evidence prevents Crown from making out evidence or evidence is ruled inadmissible pursuant to rules of evidence, hearsay etc. Incapacity defenses all have a reverse onus. Accused must raise an air of reality evidentiary burden. And prove defense on a balance of probabilities legal burden. Exception. Some NCR claims require Crown to prove on a balance of probabilities. 1. NCR. 2. Non-mental disorder, automatism. 3. Extreme intoxication. Justifications slash excuses, Crown has legal burden after hour satisfied. Accused must establish air of reality, evidentiary burden. Crown must disprove defense beyond a reasonable doubt, legal burden. 1. Defense of person. 2. Defense of property. 3. Provocation, partial defense. 4. Necessity. 5. Doris. Like this video, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell for more videos on Canadian law.